everyone. Hope you're doing well. Welcome to this CUBE conversation with Memento. I'm your host, Lisa Martin. I've got both co-founders here with me, Kawaja Shams, co-founder and CEO of Memento, and Daniela Mia, one of our alumni, rejoins us, the co-founder and CTO. They're here to talk about something really exciting that's about to drop, Memento Vector Index. Daniela Kawaja, welcome to theCUBE. Great to have you guys today. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Super happy to see you again, Lisa. Yeah, likewise, great to see you too. Danielle, I want to start with you. We're, we're going to talk about vector databases, their role in modern software. Danielle, starting with you, what's a vector? How do I obtain a vector? And why should people care about vector databases? Well, I think before we go there, let's just talk about AI in general, right? Last time okay. we spoke about ChatGPT and how it's revolutionizing the world as we know it. None of that has changed. If anything, I'm ever more excited about some of the existing applications that's already out there, like GitHub Copilot and, and all kinds of AI applications. The world is just so busy enabling AI in their applications. And I think now is the time to really care about time to market. How quickly can each person launch their, you know, each company launch their products as fast as possible and bring those benefits to their, their end users? Uh, a vector is just a tool that software engineers have in their toolbox. It's always been there, but now vector databases enable them to actually use it to speed up their application and enhance the capabilities like recommendation systems um, inside their applications. Speeding up and faster time to market is critical for, as you mentioned, Daniela, for uh, businesses in every industry, and of course on the consumer and business side, we don't want less things slower. Kawaja, let's bring you into the conversation. Help us understand how vector databases are different than traditional databases. What are some of the advantages there? Yeah, so Danielle and I come from the traditional database world. We used to be on the DynamoDB team. And one thing that we're learning in the modern day uh, is that old databases prioritize exactness. So if I'm looking for a student's name with a particular ID, the traditional databases are really, really good at that. Or they're good at you know, generating reports, like who are the students that kind of fit you know, ages X to Y and so forth. Vector databases are very different in that they help you search for things that are similar to what you're asking for rather than exactly what you're asking for. And if you zoom out and think about it, that is exactly how humans operate with each other. When I ask you a question, you're not going to give me exactly, it's very rare that I ask you what two plus two is, right? That's what a machine is used for. I ask you, usually we have an interlog, we're having a conversation, and, and that lack of preciseness, that lack of exactness that exists in the human conversation is what leads to discovery, because then we often discover things that we didn't even know that we were looking for. So the primary difference between a vector database and a traditional database is that vector databases allow you to find things that are similar to what you're looking for, and that accelerates discovery. And that's critical, the acceleration of discovery as patience is one of the things that has dwindled in the last few years, and I don't think it's coming back. I want to expand on what you said, Kawaja, and get Danielle your perspective as well, is, is how vector databases can be used to enhance recommendation engines or personalized content delivery. If I'm on Amazon and I'm, I'm wanting to search for a particular product or products that are related, what is the value that a vector database delivers in that context? Kawaja, we'll start with you and then Danielle, I have you chat in. Yeah, last week we had Mokan and, and Manju from uh, Etsy was talking about, you know, the role that vector searches plays at a company like Etsy. Now, Etsy is, is a little bit different than, than Amazon, right? You've got a lot more creative options. And like, when, when I think of Amazon, I'm thinking of, you know, buying a specific product and, and products like it with, uh, you know, shops like Etsy, you're there to really discover. And, and a lot of times you don't even know what it is that you're, you're really looking for, but you have a sense, you're trying to articulate it. And these vector indexes are kind of facilitating your journey in terms of discovering the products. Now, if you zoom out and you look at a, a really, really simple recommendation system. Now this might not be the best recommendation in the world, but like you can really simplify our recommendation systems work. You can look at, well, this is Quadra. Here are the products that Quadra has, buy, has bought in the past. Can I express that as a vector? Now, once I have Quadra's purchase history expressed as a vector, can I find other people 
who are like Kwaja, who have bought, you know, whose collective purchase history looks similar, not exactly the same, but similar to the things that Kwaja has purchased. And then I don't have to go and recommend to, uh, to this user exactly the things that other users have purchased. I can get, take it a step further and say, what are the items that are similar to the items that people like me are buying? So yeah. now you've got this really massive opportunity to help me discover items that I didn't even know that I wanted, all by doing these similarity searches and taking it to a really extreme. And the most powerful thing here is that you don't need to build a really, really sophisticated recommendation system to make this happen. Now everybody can experiment with things like this and enable this type of discovery for their applications. Wow, the, the, the power behind that sounds incredible. You know, when we see the rise of, obviously here we are streaming today, real-time data streams, the rise of it, sensors, IoT devices, social media, how can vector databases really deliver the efficiency in terms of ingestion, indexing, querying that streaming data so that the discovery is deliverable to whoever wants it, whenever they want it? Daniela, you and then Kwaja, you. I think a lot of it can be captured in, uh, you know, a, a vector, which is really when you look at it, it's a sort of a mathematical representation. We don't need to get into the details here, but it's really powerful to be able to capture it in this representation so that you can search over it quick, quickly. You can search over a large amount of data quickly and get sufficient accuracy. If you want exact accuracy, it becomes orders of magnitude harder. But it is this really powerful to have this concept where you get sufficient accuracy yet really blazing fast performance because that's actually how, again, like Quadra said, it's how humans operate. We're not looking for the exact answer every single time. We just need it to be good enough and we need it fast. We need it like yesterday is how people feel nowadays. It's true. And I don't think that expectation is going to go back at all. Nobody wants less things slower. So get into Momentum Vector Index for me. Kwaja, what is it? Why did you create it? And how is it different from existing solutions? So as a company, Danielle and I always try to improve the developer productivity. And right now, everybody is busy building AI-enabled capabilities. And the race is on and time to market matters more than ever. So we we prioritize, we, we started looking at what are people spending their uh, you know, development cycles on. A lot of people are building AI enablement capabilities for their system. And vector databases and vector indexes underpin a lot of that. The difference is as it's really, really easy today to build an experiment with a vector index. And as soon as you go and try to operationalize it, take it to production, handle the scale, get the replication, get the availability, like there's a whole lot of knobs that start to appear. You have to take, you know, this toy project, you have to deploy it in the cloud, you have to understand how many replicas you need to make sure it's highly available, you have to understand capacity management to make sure it's scaling, you have to understand what indexing algorithms you got to use, there's all these parameters, you got to say how many indexing nodes, how many query nodes, how many storage nodes, this, all of that is completely surmountable, but this is any cycles that people are expending on this are cycles that are not going towards innovation in their business. And our hope with this Memento Vector Index is to eliminate all of that. It's completely transparent. It just has two very simple APIs, index a vector, and then given a vector, find me the top nearest neighbor for that, uh, for that given vector. That's it. All of that complexity that I just mentioned gets abstracted away and that undifferentiated heavy lifting becomes Momento's problem so that our customers can continue focusing on their business domain. And that's exactly what they want, Kwasha, right? Customers, they need that time for innovation that are delivering and contributing to, to revenue. Daniela, talk a little bit about from the CTO's perspective, Momento Vector Index, what is in it for customers? What value is it going to deliver to developers to, in, in terms of making that innovation more of a reality in their organization? What Quaja and I started with, this vision of serverless for everybody, we do mean it literally for everybody. We started in caching. The world is moving towards AI and vector index, and we want to be right there helping them accelerate their speeds. Um, I can give you an anecdote. Last week during our uh, community conference, MoCon, a developer came up to me and said, I'm really excited to use vector index. I have to go and do a tutorial online on machine learning, and then I'll be good to go. And I told them him right there, and I said, 
Let me stop you right there. You do not need to learn any tutorials on machine learning. You're a software engineer. You've worked with databases before. You can work with our vector index. You do not need to learn terms like quantization or even indexing algorithms that Quadra mentioned. Our goal is to democratize this AI development for every developer out there. You don't need a PhD or even a, a medium expertise in machine learning. It should just be APIs that developers live and breathe, and they should just be building their unique applications on top of it. Um, and that is what really excites me about this service and our ability to kind of provide that acceleration for every single developer out there. I tell people, and I and I told that person at the conference, you can build an AI-enabled application today with Momento Vector Index. Wow, that acceleration, we, we're going to unpack that in a minute. So it sounds like, Kwasha, you talked about some of the complexities that Momento Vector Index is abstracting, but it also sounds like from a learning curve perspective, you've taken out a lot of additional time and resources required to get started. Talk about how you accomplish that and why that's such value for customers. I think it, you can draw parallels to how databases used to work. Traditional databases, you were talking about them earlier. In the early days, if you wanted a database that can do 10 million transactions a second, you needed a team of DBAs, you need to go buy very, very expensive racks. And there was only a small subset of companies that had the ability to pull that off because of the time, the dollars, and the human resources required to, to be able to do so. Today, if you want a database that can do 10 million TPS, you just go to the Dynamo console and you say, create table. You don't need to understand all of the distributed systems intricacies. And that, that has led to a whole new class of innovation because anytime somebody wants to build a product that requires that kind of throughput, they don't have to take a pause, go get a PhD in distributed systems, and then come back and build it. That, that massively increases the pace of innovation, experimentation, and delivery to the customer. So just like that, in a vector database, there's a whole lot of concepts. And even as we build the service, we, we're finding that you know customers have to deal with that. And a lot of them are solving, they come to the same conclusion. It just takes them much, much longer to come to that conclusion. And a lot of times, wrong configurations lead to outages, performance problems, and scalability issues for customers that we can just get out of their way by making the right decisions for them. And you know, and that includes things like just simple things like the number of indexing nodes you need, or at what point should you do brute force versus at what point do I start to do nearest like you know HNSW or or some type of approximation algorithm. That is something that sure, if you've got expertise in AI, you may want to go turn those knobs. But for the most of the world, you just want to build the application and just focus on, on the business logic. And that is the trade-off that these serverless services make. They, they provide you with a limited API area, surface area, so you don't have as many knobs that you can turn, but in exchange, you get developer productivity, you get latency characteristics that you can rely on, and you get scale characteristics that you can rely on to build you know, experiences that you can deploy at scale for everybody. And I think you just mentioned one of the key points there, Kwasha, is that scale. You know, we talked a bit about ago about how vector databases themselves can be made more scalable to handle all of the real time, the high throughput data streams that, that every organization is doing and that to handle and manage that scale with ease while enabling the innovation is really sounds to me like a game changer for customers in every organization because there's competitive advantage to being able to innovate faster, get products to market in the hands of customers, deliver those similar personalized experiences that we all want faster than your competition. Absolutely. And, and it's really exciting for us to be part of that journey and to, you know, to kind of accelerate it for our, our customers. So let's talk a little bit about, uh, from an acceleration perspective. You both did a great job of talking about the value in vector databases, what Memento is delivering with Memento Vector Index. But in terms of, of, of abstracting complexity, uh, training, how can Memento Vector Database accelerate training and querying processes for things like machine learning models that utilize vector representations? What's that acceleration of training? What does it look like? Yeah, I mean, for us, it's less about, so we, you know, the vector index is a small part of the end-to-end -end kind of pipeline. And our, you know, very narrow focus on optimizing this pipeline uh, allows us to, you know, accelerate, you know, the, the search capability part. The training, the modeling, the embeddings generation, there are other primitives for that. 
And, and that's where, you know, there's other services that, that offer that. But right now, like what we're launching is focused primarily on how do I store and index your vectors at infinite scale? And how do I deliver the search results to you very, very quickly? And, you know, the temptation is always there for us to go own the end-to-end -end pipeline, but it's really, really important for us to, you know, kind of maintain that purpose-built footprint that we have, focus on just making the search experience as seamless, as easy to use, performant, and scalable as possible before we get distracted by the, the other areas in, in this pipeline. And our focus remains on the training that we're eliminating on the human side to be able to do yeah. these uh, to do these searches. That laser focus is going to be a game changer for a lot of organizations. So, Daniela, talk to us about when this is launching, when can customers get their hands on it, and what's been some of the feedback so far? You mentioned that one client that said, I've, I've got to learn all these things first, machine learning, and you said, well, actually, no, you don't. When can people start playing around with this? Well, we have the waitlist available today, so anybody can go to our website and click to join the waitlist. Um, everybody on the waitlist gets a sneak preview to our product in a couple of weeks, um, and then in uh, the next month or so, it will be more uh, generally available to everybody. But if you get on the waitlist, you get a sneak preview of the uh, vector index experience. Of course, alongside the vector index, I wasn't. I was. I was very honest when I told that developer, "You can build an AI-enabled application today." We will be releasing all kinds of material on how to use it, sample applications. You know, we have a bunch already that's already available. You can build your own chatbot recommendation system, um, any kind of a image similarity app. Like really exciting stuff that um, people can get hands on with immediately. Very Actually, exciting stuff. Where, oh, Quasha, go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say, if you reach out to me or Daniela and mention this show, we'll put you to the top of the list and we'll get you access even sooner. So there are people that are using hey. you know, <laughs> Just let us know. Um, and the, the feedback so far has literally just been, people are astonished at the ease. Like the core difference between what we're building and, uh, and what exists out there is operationalization. It is really easy to build toy projects and experiments with what's available today. And we're just eliminating that hurdle from toy project to something that you can operationalize, deploy at scale and rely on. I love that, that time to market, that time to value is, is so critical. You heard it here, guys, Quasha said, if you reach out to them, you get put to the head of the class for on the wait list to get your hands on Memento Vector Index. Because where can clients go, I imagine your customers, the website to be able to, to, to sign up for the wait list or is there anything special you want them to know? If you just go to gomomento.com uh, and there's a banner right there, you can join the wait list um, and, you know, you just enter your email and um, and we get in touch as we're basically, we have the capability working. We're just letting in, you know, a few users at a time. There's been a lot of uh, signups already. So we're just, you know, again, we, we're, we're deliberately trying to let as few people in as possible so that we can give them a curated experience, but also collect a ton of their feedback, right? Like th that's the main thing is like, whatever you launch, is not going to be perfect in terms of capabilities, in terms of you know the APIs that are needed. So we're working, we're using this as an opportunity to really work closely with a small subset of customers to make sure that what we have built actually works in their specific um, applications as well. And that's really a, a nice symbiotic direction that you're going in in terms of helping those those select few really get their hands on it to help you evolve it as well. Quasha Daniela, congratulations on the evolution of Memento. GoMomento.com to sign up for the wait list for the Memento Vector Index. We so appreciate your insights and your time. And go Memento, because you guys have a lot of momentum. I know I said that before, Daniela, but I couldn't resist it. Thank you both so much for joining me on this CUBE conversation. I really appreciate your time. Thanks for having me. Thanks us. very much, Lisa. Oh, my pleasure. We want to thank you for watching this CUBE conversation. Keep it right here for more great content. You're watching the CUBE, the leader in live tech event coverage. Thank you.